Now we're going to prepare um, our super collider, or we're going to write add some code to our super collider code to get the serial data in from our ultrasonic sensor directly into super collider. So we just need to. I, I showed you earlier how to install the Arduino um, extension. Now we just need to um, bring in. Uh, we just need to write a little bit of code so that we can read from the serial port. Because remember, our ultrasonic sensor, the thing that's been loaded onto our Arduino, is writing to the serial port. Now we just need to read from that serial port, and we use this Arduino SMS for that. All right, so uh, probably the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's get rid of this. Um, so we're first we we're going to scan our serial port. So we're going to use this uh, serial port dot devices. It's a command like that, and so it's just going to tell us the devices that are there, and it gives us uh, basically um, an array. So I have a Bluetooth modem, Bluetooth PD sync, and then this our serial tty dot usb serial that is clearly my um, Arduino. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Okay. And so if you downloaded the, the little packet, the GitHub packet, you'll have this MIDI sign underscore serial.scd. And it's just an updated, it's basically what we're doing in this tutorial. It's an updated version of the MIDI sign that you were able to play using your mouse, play the sine wave. Now this is going to allow us to also add the functionality of the ultrasonic sensor. Okay, so we're going to create a serial reading object here. Basically, and I'm going to just pop back and forth. We're going to go, I'm going to create a global variable. In this case, I'll just call Eno. And then I'm going to say, um, what is it again? Oops. It's Arduino SMS. Okay. Use the Arduino SMS object. Okay. And then it's looking for the port name and the baud rate. So we're going to put in quotations that thing we copied from over here in double quotes and then it's going to look for the baud rate well uh, i remember from my code here we're writing we're starting the serial bus at 19200 19200 19200 okay oops all right so that creates let me make this slightly smaller that creates um an Arduino SMS object. Let's evaluate that. It says Arduino SMS. And then now, if we want to do anything, uh, it's basically if we're going to use this eno.action. Okay. So every time it gets something's happening on the serial port, basically, this is going to go. Okay. So in our case, once every 33 milliseconds. Okay. So if I go ino.action, uh, is it capital? Okay, and then you're gonna sorry, you're gonna say equals, and uh, then a function. So some sort of function. So whatever every time an uh, action happens, it will run this function, and it has uh, built-in built-in uh, variables as well, arguments as well. So I guess the first one that comes in is the the message. So we're gonna have an arg. Uh, we're just gonna give ourselves a couple of spaces here. I'm going to go arg msg. Okay. And then we'll just post the message msg dot post post line. So once we evaluate that, it should come in. I have my sensor here. I don't think I have it on camera at the current moment. Um, it should come here. It should come in. So let me run that. And then you see there it's coming in directly into my post there as I change my distance. Oops. Okay. So that works good. And then to, to stop the, you know, you just go, uh, let me remind myself again, dot close. I N O dot close. Okay. So we, we've confirmed that that's working now. Okay. We've got the right device. So this is just really used once. Once you write your code, you won't need this every time. So that's just the one time to check. Unless you change your device or you add different things then you'll have to check it which one it is and what it's called, okay? But if you're using the same Arduino, it should always be called that. 
keep our baud rate. So that's just to show you that you can do that. Now we're gonna develop our action. So what we wanna do is we wanna grab in that data that we're sending out from our Arduino, the sensor data. We wanna kinda parse it and then we wanna use it in our, um, in our uh, uh, to change. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use our ultrasonic ch sensor to change the volume of our sine wave, to change the amplitude, okay? So uh, what I need to do is I need to parse that string. You notice here, it comes in US1 colon 60, okay? So what I need to do is I need to grab that 60 away from that US1. It seems complicated in this, seems more than we need to do in this single um, instance because we're only using one single sensor. But in future projects, when you're using multiple sensors and they're all coming in at the same time, this will give you an opportunity to index that, to parse that out. So you can use the ultrasonic sensor data for something. And then, we're parsing the string and just getting that data out. Uh, yeah, so like if you have multiple sensors, you can parse for a potentiometer or a button or something like that. All right, so just it, it just takes a little bit of, of massaging there of our data. So our data is actually coming in uh, here in this message, okay? And we posted that, and that's what it looks like, okay? It's coming in in a string format because we're, we're, we're posting it as a string. Okay, uh, we're just doing something to make sure. Okay, so to extract that out of there, I'm gonna use this um, this thing called split. Now, now um, <coughs> uh, let's, let's just have a quick look at what split looks like. If you take a string, um, um, okay, and if we, it just it just evaluates because that's a string. If we do dot split, okay, and then we give it something to split at. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I can do a, a symbol. Let me try that. No, it doesn't like that. Okay. Um, well, because of you. Okay, if we split it at the colon. So it tells us what to do, really, which is nice. Split, if we go like that, it says it's looking for the separator. And the way it distinguishes, uh, you know, that from something else, you're, that you're actually using it as a separator rather than uh, like a, a variable or uh, some other kind of thing, you use this money sign. And then my separator is going to be that colon. And it turns green, which is nice. So if I say that, it's going to create an array of strings split by that colon, all right? So if I'm using our actual example, US1 colon, uh, whatever it was, 60. If I split that, it's gonna create an array of strings. The first part will be the, the left of the colon. The, the, right, well, the second one will be the right of the colon. And the colon just goes away. That's how split strings work. There, you can do that in processing well. Most programs have this sort of thing. So you can send in a long string, and you can have some kind of delimiter, and then it'll it'll create a, a index, an array, an index list of all these strings. Okay. So what we're going to do is do that. Then we're going to um, what did I call it? I think I called it amp. Oh, I have a variable called messages. So there, msgs. Okay. And then I'm going to split that messages by that colon, all right? Um, msgs dot split, and then I'm going to do it at by the colon, okay? Uh, sorry, uh, messages msgs equals, so messages equals msg dot split. So msg is what's coming in. That's this one that says us one dot sixty. Variable messages is going to be the split version of that split. Okay, and then do I grab it? Okay, no, so let's go ahead and run that. Uh, I think we have to st restart our Arduino. And if I run the action, it should be, oops. Oh, I'm not printing, okay. So uh, I think we can just go. And I think I should, I think I should just rerun this action and I'll just replace it. There it goes. Okay, see now it's this array that's um, got US1 in the first bit and then it's got the second bit is the value. Okay, so then we can 
of course, extract that if we want. We can just grab the, the second. Remember, uh, arrays start at zero, index zero. So if you want to grab the second bit of that, let's just rerun the action. And it should just be our data. There's 60. So that's an easy way of sorting out the data. Okay. Now, in future, in future posts, when we have more than one kind of data, we might, we might want to divide by another delimiter, but we'll get into that later, actually. I won't confuse this, this tutorial with that now, just explaining how that works, okay? So that's how we get messages one, then becomes the, the pertinent data that we need. Close that as well. Now, uh, just a quick, quick, quick review. Uh, I've created a sine wave that has a bunch of different, like an envelope and different things going on. Um, um, and uh, I have an amplitude variable here, okay? And I've created a, a control rate uh, argument for the amplitude. We've been over this in the earlier tutorial. So every time I get amp, you can change it, okay? And then, so if you wanna change amp, you change it <coughs> by, setting, uh, by setting this uh, amplitude. All right, so I've, and then later on, I'll st I start the synth as this empty, that's the synth, okay? And then, and then um, what we're gonna do is, we're going to, um, so it's, the, the synth is already running if we ran all of our code, and then we're just, Okay, so, um, <coughs> sorry, uh, yeah, right, so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, no, so anyways, the, this, in this, in this project here, the serial sign, we have the synth def, we're booting everything, and then we're running the, the synth going, and so, it, since it's already going, we just have to use our thing to set that synth that's already running, all right, and we're going to set it with this amp message, okay, so that's what we'll do. We'll get rid of this post line. And then since we already have it, you know, we already have messages, we have that. Um, I, I like to be very careful here as well because sometimes data gets confused when transferring between different things. We'll do, do the as string. We'll make sure that message is a string even though it should be coming in as a string because it's that's what it's printed. And then we're going to change that into an integer. So what we do is then we have this MT, which is our synth that's already running, and we do dot set. And hopefully you did enough practice and you know what that means. And we're gonna set the amp argument, and we're gonna set it to this MSGS. So that's whatever's coming into our sensor. Uh, one, because remember that becomes a an array. Uh, too, much, too much data there, so we can't go back to it. Becomes an array. And uh, the zero part is the the label US and the, the S1, and then the, the second part and the number two part is the number. So we're going to do messages one, and then to just be double, double clear, we're going to make that dot as integer. And that allows us to set the amp. Well, now the problem is it's coming in somewhere between two and 60. So that is um, one one issue. So, you know, 60, normally our amplitude range is between zero and one. So 60 would be much, much, much too loud, cause you to clip and other horrible things. So uh, let's, let's, let's um, map that data, normalize it between a number between zero and one. So you're going to use the range uh, zero and 60, and then you're going to, you know, map that. Okay. So um, let's create another variable here called amp. All right, and we're going to actually go amp equals msgs. We're just going to repeat this bit. Messages one dot as integer. Okay, and then we're going to map this here to dot. We're going to do this dot lin lin. It's a linear mapping thing. Let me show you that offline here too as well. So if you want to map something, you can take a number and map it at a range. So if I take 25 and then dot lin lin, 
Lin Lin just refers that you're mapping linearly from uh, the linear input to a linear output. You also have like Lin EXP. That's another example. And there's a number of those. So it's going to take a linear input and map it to an exponential output. Okay, Lin Lin. And then it, it looks for in, in min, in max, out min, min, out max. And there's a clip too. That means that you can set, you know, uh, it to, to constrain it. So if I go 25 lin lin from 0 to 100 and from 0 to 1, so it's, gonna, it's going to take the number 25, find out where it lies between 0 and 100, and then map that, you know, that percentage between 0 and 1. So you'd expect something like 0.25. And there it is. It comes out 0.25. Okay, so that's how that works. So we're going to map that. Um, so where are we going to map it to? Well, we have that constraint in, in our uh, code. It's going to go, it has to be constrained from 0 to 60. So it's not going to go below 0. It won't anyways because there's no negative distance. And um, like, you know, it's not going to receive an echo before it's sent it. So there's never going to be a negative. And then, I don't know, maybe that could happen in like a warped space time or something like that. Uh, there was an example of that. I'm trying to remember. Anyways, there's some leading experiment or something, molecules that something reality happens before. Anyways. All right. Well, well, there is a thing. There is this thing that you might have heard of that um, when people are making decisions of stuff like that, they're, you know, th uh, the part of their brain that actually moves to the the choice happens before they actually the part of their brain that makes the decision. Anyways, that's something totally different off topic. So uh, it's going to be constrained between zero and sixty, and then uh, so we know that it's coming in. Whatever this number coming in, it's going to either be between zero. We'll make it. Uh, it's coming in as an integer, so we'll just make it that uh, between zero and sixty. Okay, and then we want to map that to a range. We want to do what's called normalize it, which means you take any range and you you smush it to a number between decimal number between 0 and 1. I like to put the decimal point in just in case some programs treat them differently unless you put the dots in. Okay, so that's going to be that. And let's just for fun, let's just, uh, let's print that amp. Okay, and I'm just going to comment this out. And I'm going to restart my Arduino. And I'm going to um, send the action. And then there you go. So now you see, it's, as I'm really close, it's almost zero. As I get further and further away, it becomes closer to one. Now, you can also, you know, you can also, I mean, we won't do it here, but this is a good opportunity here, this little bit here, this mapping bit. You can also use some math and mess around with it you know, to get a range that's a little bit more a curve, you can multiply it or do some kind of curving so that it, you know, it 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 more rapidly approaches one or, you know, goes up rapidly more rapidly and then gradually approaches one. So you you know, you can do a lot of interesting things with this sort of mapping. This is an opportunity to do. And that might come in later when you are messing with some sensors. This is a an interesting area of interrogation there to just change that sort of mapping thing into uh, with different algorithms okay so let's get rid of that so we made our amplitude there we've mapped this message coming in and then finally we're just going to set our running um, running synth it's already running to this amp okay and then that's that's pretty much it and that's what we have here essentially we have well we posted it but we have this 7 and 21. I'm not sure why I did that. I think I wanted a more restricted range there. So, right, because sev uh, 7, if I put 0, 7 is off. So I wanted it, I didn't want to get actually all the way up to the sensor to turn the amplitude all the way to 0. So in this way, if I get below 7, anywhere below 7, uh, then uh, it will be, well, here it's already been mapped, so you can't see, but it will be uh, 0. And then I guess 21 is as high as I want to go. I, si I think 60 is a little bit too far from the sensor, so I didn't want necessarily that much volume control, and then I'll be one. Uh, so it's a pretty restricted range. Now, if you wanted a much higher one, you know, if you wanted to do something that gives you a little bit more volume control, you can do that a little bit uh, louder. You can just change that maximum, okay? And I have this post line, and then empty set amp amp, and that's setting this synth 
to amp. Well, one thing I did change here is I, I started this synth with trigger one that's in this MIDI sign serial. That just means it's it, it'll start sounding as soon as you engage it. Okay. Now, finally, I want to just point out, finally, I did make one adjustment to the, the synth def. Okay. So we're taking in this amplitude. So um, I am going to, uh, I had just added this one thing. So you'll notice that to the synth def, you'll notice that it's coming in, but if I'm a little bit, you know, if I'm a little bit not so accurate, there's these num there's jumps in numbers and stuff like that. So what that translates to is you'll get, you know, these volume changes, but you'll get something that goes boo, -oo -oo, you know, you get these jumps in volume maybe because every once in a while I might move my hand wrong or it might you get these random ones every once in a while. Okay, and you don't want that happening. So what I did was I put into the synth dev this smoothing filter, this median filter. So basically what it's gonna do, and this is already in the original one, it takes in the amplitude, this control rate argument, okay, so that's going to be this number here between 0 and 1. And then this second bit, this is the new bit I added right here. I use this built-in filter called median, and you can look that up if you want. It'll tell you, describe to you what it does and gives you some examples, okay. And it it's a median filter. Uh, essentially, no, I don't really do statistics or any of this. I think this is pretty basic math, but I can't say I, I can, I'm qualified to explain this very well, but apparently, you know, the median is it takes, it takes the, um, you know, it takes a, a set of numbers and then it, it, it gives you the median, you know, it gives you, uh, the, 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 the middle, middle most number. So if you have a, a string of fives and then like a 10, it's just, it's going it to discard that 10. It just filters that out, you know? So hopefully it filters out these jumps. Okay. Now this number here is the, the, the set. So it's going to wait to take in amp is coming in, coming in. This is going to take in 25 at a time and then pop out the median. And then that'll be the number that gets actually used as your amplitude. Okay. So you can change that number to adjust it. I guess the higher the number is, it adds latency. Uh, it makes it a little slower. And then the lower the number is, I guess it's less accurate. So if I get, if my, my blip includes five ones, you know, then I want to make sure I have uh, an equal number of things on the other side, you know, that'll that counteract those ones. So um, anyways, I found 25 works pretty well. So that filters that amplitude so you don't get those, uh, those changes in volume, those blips. Okay, so that's one line of code that I added to the MIDI sign. Uh, synth def, you're going to want to do that, or, you know, you can just use this file, of course, as well, but since we're learning here, it's worthwhile doing that, <laughs> and then you'll be good to go. So good luck with that. Hopefully that all works for you. Uh, let me just review, actually, really quickly what I did with this um, Arduino. I activated my Arduino, my serial. Actually, I'm reading from the serial port. It happens to be the Arduino writing to it, but it could be anything writing to the serial port. I've had a serial mouse, for example. I could be re reading that data. I use this Eno action equals in this function to uh, to bring in to do something. It performs this action every time it receives a, a bit of data from the serial port, right? And so I've I've determined that rate by using this delay thirty three. So this loop runs. It sends out prints to the serial port every 33 milliseconds, okay? So this action happens every 33 milliseconds, whether I want it to or not. So this message is uh, is what the data coming in on the action, on the serial port, what's ever being printed to it, okay? And then I use these variables to split that message because, and to, at the delimiter of the colon, because I have this US1, US1 colon. So that splits it into an array Messages zero will be US one, and messages one will be the number coming in from my sensor. So, and I, I decide that I'm gonna create this variable amp, which is gonna take that number, it's a number usually between zero and 60. It's gonna just make sure it's an integer, and then it's gonna use this lin-lin mapping system, zero and 60 to zero and one. Now in my MIDI sign serial, I do, um, what do I do? I do be 7 and 21, which is probably what I'd recommend. You can adjust this. So that means that if you want it to be completely silent, like an attack, 
uh, that's what you have to be below seven. So you can just adjust that. You can make it higher, maybe nine. So then you're, you know, you have a lot more space below or whatever. 21 is the, the top. So that depends on how high you want your hand to go. Okay. Uh, in this case, I did zero to 60, which probably isn't the best. And then normalizing that between zero and one. And then this action will set empty.set, which is a synth here that if you, you know, engage that, uh, and uh, it will change its amp amplitude to the amplitude coming in. Okay. So let's give that all a go. I'm going to recompile this. And hopefully that all works. And I'm going to boot my server. And then I'm going to send my synth def. And it also makes these OSC defs go. And also um, sends this action going. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think I needed to quit this. Oh, I did recompile. Okay. So that's printing the app. Okay, good. And then if I send my synth going. There it goes. So it's working. And you notice you can hear the little blips. So maybe my median filter isn't the best. But you can adjust that up here by making the set maybe slightly bigger. And it works okay. I think as far as these things go, these sensors, that kind of accuracy is pretty good. Perhaps if you wanted to use... Um, a greater sort of smoother you can do some massaging but it might be even better to use a different sensor if you wanted to get a really really smooth signal maybe like an infrared sensor which uses infrared light it's the same kind of system but it uses infrared light to do it but that's not bad i'm pretty happy with that anyways all right well good luck hopefully you can get that working for yourself um and uh yeah